I've seen a lot of questions in various forums uh, where people are saying, have I found silver? My first thought is, if you're in an area that has no silver, it's highly unlikely that it is. Uh, not to say that a glacier didn't pick it up and drop it, um, or you got extremely lucky and found a spot with, with good silver. If you do want to try to find silver, try to get yourself into an area where there was high grade silver. Um, in a place where there was a silver mine, but there's only 10 ounces to the ton, I would say it's highly unlikely that you will actually find something worthwhile to take home and stick on a shelf. Um, and, and when you get into even the areas with a lot of high grade silver, a lot of the rocks just look like this. They're gray. And it's not especially heavy. So why would you take that home? Unless you had a metal detector that told you there's something else in that particular rock. Um, the best guy that I've seen or know for just eyeballing silver is a fellow called Ty T.Y. Olson. And uh, he bops around Cobalt Ontario and Silver Center and other places. And he stops when he finds something interesting. And boy, I've seen some of the specimens he's collected and they are exceptional. Uh, now, what I'd like to do in this video is just pick three rocks from uh, some of my, what, what I call discards, and see what's really in them. I've kept them because my metal detector told me that there is something there. Um, I just haven't had time to, to really process them or evaluate them properly. But going back to what Ty looks for, Ty would really look for rocks that are showing pink. That's the cobalt bloom. Or green. That's the nickeline. Uh, or just white. Uh, in cobalt, uh, a lot of the silver was associated with white calcite. And there is no quartz in the area, or very little. So when you see white rock, that's typically calcite. Now, in looking at the rocks, so let's pick three. Here's one here. Um, it has multiple colors. The red urethrite is a pretty good sign. You can actually see that there was the host rock and then a vein. And so the question is, what is in that vein? The other thing is that I like to do is test it with a pinpointer, which will tell me where the, uh, the metals are. This is a pretty good rock. I don't know why I haven't processed it earlier. Actually, in looking at it, hopefully the camera can pick it up, I can see a little vein of silver here, some other silver there. Um, I'm not really seeing it in here, but first hint is, if you can, get it wet. Um, also, rub off the dirt. These rocks come up awfully dirty sometimes, and it'll, it'll direct you to the spots that maybe have something that's a little more interest. Um, for sure the metal detector says there's metal. I'm thinking here is some sort of mixed metal. Uh, the one that always gets me is something called, I think it's called palloptite. If you break this rock or fracture it, uh, there'll be a gray, uh, but if it's in the sunlight, very shiny material that shows up. And there may be silver in it, and 99% of the time there's not, and it's a leverite. But uh, what else do we have down here? What I'd really like to get is a rock that when I cut it, so this one is very light, so I'll ask myself the question, why did they bring it home? Let's put the metal detector on it to 
So there is something up in the one end. And give it a bit of a rinse. And I don't really see anything coming through. But what I'd like to be able to do is perhaps put a fresh cut in it. And if there is a small vein of silver, if you cut it the right direction, it'll look like, it'll look like uh, lightning. And uh, if there's uh, a little bit of silver pushed into the other rock, it will look like a cloud. And so it's really, really attractive when sliced. So not high hopes on this because it's not very heavy and I'm not seeing anything on the outside. But the detector tells me something's there. So let's, let's inspect it further. Now here's a small one. Again, tests all right. Um, give it a rinse. And yeah, I'm seeing like right there, I can see the silver. So one of the things is silver is bright, especially when it's been rubbed. So you can rub it on a cloth, rub it in your leather gloves, rub it on something and see whether or not any comes through. If, if you're very lucky, if there's a vein that runs through it, when you run, run your hand over it, it will be rough, rougher than the, uh, the surrounding rock. Um, yeah, I can see a little bit of silver right there. Yeah, I think that that's a, a small vein right there. So that might be worthwhile to cut. So I said three rocks. There's my three. Now, the reason I want to cut it is, now if you're in the field, what you want to do is, is if you're unsure, and it's the decision of leave it or take it, I, I'd, I'd smash it. Give it a break, and then look on the inside of the fresh cut and see what it looks like. Um, all, all that is now, all I've talked about so far is what the detector told me and uh, perhaps what your eyes told you and then wait. You know, that, that, that's, I'd say half a pound. So, um, of course, you'd be better off if you had it assayed, but you're not going to take a rock like that and get it assayed. You're not going to get any of these things assayed. Um, and you can't assay in the field, of course. You can also acid test, um, but with these mixed metals, and typically the silver is associated with other metals in cobalt and terio with uh, nicoline, which is a nickel arsenide, and cobalt uh, quite often, and then they mix together when, when they formed. So you can't be 100% certain. What you can be certain when you cut it is if it shines in the sunlight and shines in the shade you've probably got platinum which would be a bad thing or silver anyway let's cut these bad boys and see what happens so for this i'm just using a small tile saw it's a seven inch blade i've actually got rocks that i can't cut with it because they're just too darn big um, but for something small like this now when you decide to cut, or when I decide to cut, there's two ways of looking at it. One is to try to get the largest cut as you can. Um, the other is if you happen to see vein material, is you want to cross cut it or intersect it. Um, so I think with this one, what I'm going to do is my first slice will be somewhat thick because it's an odd shaped rock. I'll just do it like that.
Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. It, it's almost like flowery. And you can see the calcite here. The flowery silver. That, my friends, is what I would call dendritic. Lovely, lovely stuff. I think, well, what I could do is one more cut in this one to get a nice dendritic slice. Um, I'm almost tempted just to leave it alone because it's just a beautiful specimen. I'll think about that. Let's get the next one. I'm thinking the veins go this way, so I'm going to cut it this way. Now we're getting down to a very fine vein. But to me, quite an attractive rock, so hosting it is really nice. Oh, lovely. So should I do one more cut? Yeah, why not? Uh, 
Huh. Still silver. Okay. What do we have here? This one, it's obvious the vein goes this way. So let us make it wider. Wow. Look at that. That is like a two inch wide vein, a little bit of calcite. There's the host rock and the calcite mixed in. But that's what I would call a mixed metal. It, I can see the silver in it, but it definitely has something else. Let's, uh, let's give it another slice. Because we're not into the main body yet. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope I can help somebody out. And uh, I think we're done. I don't think I'm going to cut this anymore for now. Because I don't know what I'm going to do with the slices. <laughs> I think what I'd like to do is polish out some of the, just where the wheel went through. It did. I think that would polish up really nice. So that'll be my next.